All right, Dave Reese of Blue Rail Trains here, and today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about range with your Blue Nami Loco, and maybe give you some tips on how to uh, get some good range. So what I've got here is I've got my uh, standard little Blue Nami HO. I'm going to uh, launch the uh, Blue Nami app, and then I'm going to uh, head over there to that fence over there, which is 100 feet away, just a little over 100 feet away, see if I can uh, trigger the functions from there, run the train, and then uh, hopefully that'll work out, and then I'll come back and give you a couple tips on what you might want to do to make sure you, your installation uh, has decent range. So I'll launch the old app there, all right, and uh, it's connected to the train. It's uh, collecting all the CVs, which takes 4.56 seconds, not too long. And now I've got control of the train. So now I'm just going to march over there and uh, I'll uh, trigger the uh, horns and stuff and then I'll be right back. So keep an eye on me. All right, there's the bell. Is that still working? I hope it is. plants. That's a Wabco horn. All right, so as you see there, I was more than 100 feet away and I didn't have any trouble running it. But so let me uh, give you some tips on uh, range. Now, if you're going to install it, when you put the decoder in, you want to put the decoder, it's got a Bluetooth antenna in there. And you want that to be as far away as reasonably possible from uh, any sources of uh, metal that you have. If you can get it, so like if you have a brass loco, brass shell, if it's possible to get it, you know, more than a quarter inch, more than a half inch away from the brass wall in that uh, inside your shell, then you're going to get better reception uh, than you will. You don't want to butt it up against a piece of metal inside of there. This loco has a uh, has a plastic shell. So it's not really a problem. Um, let's see. Another thing is, is that you don't want to go, I don't know if you see it, but that's a chain link fence over there. And you don't want to go uh, control the train from the other side of a chain link fence. Because a chain link fence is this size, it's just the right size to mess up a 2.4 gigahertz signal. Um, so if you have a layout, I don't know why you would, that has chain link fences all around it and through the middle of it, then that's probably going to be a problem. Um, also, some people say, well, what if I'm indoors or what if I'm with a bunch of other guys with locomotives? Well, first of all, Bluetooth Low Energy was designed for plenty of indoor use with people at close proximity. You've probably never heard anyone say, hey, I was in a New York office and my Apple Watch stopped working because there were too many other people in the office. Or, or you've probably never heard someone say, oh, I was in the hospital and my heart transfusion machine stopped working the Bluetooth low energy heart thing because there are too many people in the hospital around me. It's, they're designed for people to work in close proximity. And the way that um, it works is Bluetooth low energy has 40 channels. So uh, let's say you have 40 guys hanging out in the close little area and we're all running our locomotives. Well, each guy gets his own channel and so everything's going to be fine. Um, when you get to the 41st guy now, now we, we're one over the 40 the, uh, channels that are available. So he's going to have to channel share with someone else. Um, the thing is, is that these DCC packets are so small. They're like three bytes. So they're very, very tiny little packets. So it doesn't take up a lot of space in the bandwidth. So when, if another guy shares a channel with you, you know, you're not really going to experience a lot of latency. The most I might imagine, let's say we had 40 guys and they were all running their trains and they were all hitting the horn at the same time. Ah. And we're all doing that. Well, the 41st guy, every the first 40 guys are going to be fine. Guy number 41, he might experience like a 50 millisecond 
delay in his horn, um, which is about 1 20th of a second. Um, guy number 42, he's going to uh, maybe have a 100 millisecond delay, which is a 10th of a second. So um, by the time you get up to about 60 guys in a really close area, now the 60th guy might uh, have about a one second latency. Now this is only if we're all hitting the horn at the same time like this. As long as we're not all hitting the horn at the exact same moment, then you're probably not gonna experience any latency at all. But so the only advice I have for you in that, if you're worried about being in close quarters with a bunch of other people running their trains, is don't get more than 60 guys in a really tight space and try to coordinate hitting the horn at the same moment because uh, some of you are going to experience a little bit of latency. But um, for general use, I think you should be pretty good. So, all right, this is Dave Reese for Blue Rail Trains. Just showing you, giving you a little advice about range with your locomotive, your Blue Nami. Um, I'm a little grayer than I was in the uh, past videos you might have seen. Uh, I dye it gray because I'm a Highlander and I don't want people to know. Uh, I don't want to. Well, it seems strange, but uh, that's it. Enjoy your Blue Nami trains.